Today we will discuss about how you can use NGRX with standalone components. So let's jump into the video. Hi everyone, this is Subrat and you are watching Fun of Heuristics. So on this channel, you will get to know about the programming languages, framework and all about algorithms. So please consider subscribing and hit the bell icon if you haven't yet. In our previous videos on standalone component, we have discussed about how we're gonna create standalone component, how we can use router to lazy load them. And today we'll discuss about how we can use NGRX with your standalone components. In this video, I will only focus on if you don't have any NG module at all. So if you have NG module, you can use a NGRX as previous, like import your NG module and use that with different standalone components. But if you don't have any NG module at all, like we have discussed that in, in our previous video, then how are we gonna do that? And by the way, if you don't know what is standalone component, how you're gonna create it and how it will work with routes. So I will give the playlist on the card as well as in the description. Please go ahead and watch that one so that it will be clear for you. I don't think I have to explain you guys what NGRX is and how powerful it is. But if you don't know, just think like it's a state management framework which will manage all of your state by giving lots of functionality. So now I'll go to our code. This is the same code base we have in our previous videos or means in the whole series, I will add NGRX to our project. So for that, we'll do ng add at NGRX store at latest. So I will say yes. So it will install NGRX and change some configuration so that it, it will be usable in our project. But you'll say Subrat that we don't have ng module. So what is updated? Now we'll go and check our app module it hasn't been updated anything because we have removed the, the ng module from our application but if you go to the package json it will be added to our package as ngrx store so now we'll go and close this one so to use the store in our project we need to import that or to provide that to our application and if you remember in our last video we have used main.ts to provide our routers while bootstrapping our app component. In this case, app component is the main component for our application. So here, while bootstrapping our application, we need to bootstrap means provide our store to our application. Like we have provided our provide route here. Now we can add provide store to our providers of our bootstrap application. So we'll go just go ahead and import this one from NGRX store. So our provide store, what is does, if you compare it with our normal Angular application means with ng module, inside your import, we used to write store module dot for root. So the same thing has been done by the provide store as we are bootstrapping it from our main.ts. So we are providing it here. So this is our store. So this specify that we have our global store. Now we, we need to create our action, our reducer, and our effect and select and, and all those things. And by the way, if you don't know NGRX, what is NGRX, what is action, selector, reducer, router store, uh, runtime checks, lot of things. I have an in-depth playlist. Please go ahead and watch that one. It will be very helpful to you to learn a new framework. Please feel free to ask me any question about NGRX and I will be love to share that with you and I could also learn from you guys. So coming back to our standalone component. So here, so as you created our store, now we'll go ahead and create our selector and action and reducer. So in this video, I will not going to show you how we're gonna use effects. So it will be a similar way. I will just show you how we're gonna use the effects in terms of uh, standalone component, but it will be same for how you'll do that for reducer and you can and get what is an effect and how, how to use that in our effects video. For the sake of time, I have created a folder called store and inside that I have created action and reducer. So first we'll go to the action. Uh, I have created two action, which is, which is one is get user and add user. So inside get user, we are saying create action, action name, and we are returning all the user what we have. And while adding the user, we are creating an action and passing that user to the reducer so that you can use and update our state. And if you'll go to the reducer, so here we need to have our state. We have user array and the user is user ID and name. 
Similarly, I have initialized the state for user state, created a reducer, we have given his initial state, and on get user, we are saying that we'll get all the user which we have. And on add user, we are getting the state, we are getting a user to add, which we have sent it from our state, means from our action. And here I have created a selector so that now you can subscribe this selector and go get all user. And I'm saying it again, if you don't know about selector, reducer and action, please go ahead and watch those videos. I will link all the videos on the card as well as well as in the description below. So after creating our action reducer and selector, we'll go to our app component here and we'll try to use that in our app component by dispatching some action and listening to our selectors. So for that, we'll create a constructor which will have our store and the store type is of user state. To invoke some action, we'll create an action as create user. So the method name is create user. From that, I'm just passing my name and we are dispatching the action which we have just created. And to read the data from our store, we'll add an selector which is saying user observable. It will select from our user selector which you have just created. So now we'll, we'll go ahead and use this selector in our HTML. I will not make this fancy. I will just add a normal ng4 with displaying just the username. As we now have our selector action reducer, now we need to register our state or our reducer where we have provided our store. So if you go to your main.ts, if you remember in your, in our normal ng module application, we used to write store module dot for root and we pass our re reducer there. So here you we can do like you just, I have just given a name or user reducer. If you go and watch the series we have, there we have a lot of reducer and meta reducers as well. You can pass them here as well. So as for the video, I have only one reducer. That's why I'm just passing it like this. If you have multiple reducer, please feel free to wrap that to an action reducer map and put it here. So on click of this button, we are calling this create user which will eventually dispatch an action to add some user so now if we go to our browser if i just select user so now the user is added that means we have called this method and our store is dispatched with an action it's add user and that user it means here it's me i've got added to our store so and the same time our selector is selected means it's always listening to the store as it subscribed to that so it's selected and as we have used async pipe here it able to fetch all user so i just create two three times so it's keep on adding the user so this shows that our ngrx will also going to work with our standalone application so we saw how we're going to use our ngrx with standalone component but in this in this video we have saw like action reducer selector and the basic things and if you want to use effects you can do the same here like provide effects you need to install effects package and then it will be available here and you can pass your effects like we have passed our reducer here so it's pretty clear once you just go ahead and do that it will be clear for you there is one more thing remain like if you want to use a feature reducer or a feature effects, how we're going to use that. So previously we create our different module, which will be our lazy loaded module or child module. And you inject that feature, feature store or feature, uh, feature reducer or feature effects in a module. But in this scenario, if you remember, we had our router here, you can give your feature modules means feature store feature effects for example here i will give a feature provider so you can provide your provide state which is same as we have used in our bootstrap and you can give a key you can store this key in the 
reducer as well and you can use your re reducers and similarly it will work for the effects as well so that's how easy it is to use standalone component and you combine that with your ngrx it will be so powerful so that's all for today today we saw how you can use ngrx in our standalone application we saw how you're going to register your store and how you register your state and how you're going to use your action and selector to show something in your application so please hit the like button if you like the video and please do subscribe to the channel and don't forget to hit the bell icon so that you will not miss future videos we're going to meet in the next video till that stay happy bye bye